Hi, we're here again for week three of Art Online with Mrs. Shimko, and I am excited to be here. I'm actually really excited for our assignment this week, not because I don't enjoy talking about art, and your responses have been really interesting to what we've been talking about, both with the Vanessa German that you read about this past week and with the Jeff Koons the previous week. But this week, it's creating, and that is where my heart is, right? Getting you to think, getting you to do, and getting you to put those things together. So this week, it's asking you to pretend, not pretend that you're Vanessa German, but that you follow her process in creating a similar sculpture to hers. What are some things that you would attach onto a sculpture that represented you? What are some things that would be keepsakes, things from your history, things that signify your personality or symbolize different things in your life? And then you have two options. You could actually make something 3D sculpturally if you want and take a picture of it, or you can draw a picture of those items. Either one is fine. If you complete either one, Please make sure that you are attaching it to your assignment so I can see it. I'm not going to assume that anyone is actually going to write in the assignment, like draw in there. Although if you do have a tablet with a stylus and you would prefer to do that, please feel free to do so. I think the majority of us are going to draw. And let's talk for a second about drawing materials. I might be an art teacher. And I might, very likely, I, I totally do have a bunch of different craft things here at home, but I don't have a lot of them that are mine. I have three girls, as many of you know, and they have a lot of craft stuff that they use. But most of my stuff is at school, so it's not doing me much good there. So I was looking around my house and I was like, I need to draw or show examples of something like this. What can I suggest for kids who might not have them readily available like me? Well, the first thing I found was this something to draw on. I have this notebook. It was my daughter's. And there were some empty pages, and I've been taking notes in it. I have, well, that's her stuff. I have notes in the one side for different meetings that I've been at, and I've been doing um, drawing games on the other side. But there's lined paper here, and lined paper is absolutely an option for drawing. I know you do it in school because it's available. If that's what you have available for this assignment, use the lined paper. But maybe you don't want the lines, and I get that too. So one of the things we also have is we go through a lot of cardboard at my house. We eat a lot of cereal, and this is not cereal, dog treats. But when the box is empty, you can open it And suddenly you have an, there it is, an empty surface to draw on. So that's option number two. Can you draw on white paper? Sure. Can you draw on colored paper? Sure. Can you tape things to a piece of paper? Yes. All of these are fine. Utensils for drawing? Pencils are always my go-to. I know you know that from school, even though many of you want to draw with pens. But what's the nice thing about pencils? It has an eraser. So if you make a mistake, you can just get rid of it. When I'm using cardboard or something darker, I often like to draw with marker because then I can see it, right? Pencil, it's just a little bit hard to see on the cardboard surface. It can be done, but it's harder. In fact, my favorite thing to do is to use both of these things together. First pencil to make my lines, make any mistakes, erase if I need to, and then the marker to go over the lines so I can really see them. Can you color your stuff in? Mm -hmm. Do you have to? No. But think about what quality is, right? You are not in school. You're not going to have me there to be like, what else could you do? Spend a little more time. Look at it this way. Try this. So you have to be that voice in your own head. How could I make this a little bit better? Does it make sense? Can you 
get your visuals across without using words next to them? Are there some things that you might want to use words next to so it really makes sense for the assignment? Those are questions for you to answer. Next time, on our next video, I'll show you what things I came up with. And I probably won't draw them, I'll just show them to you actually. I will tell you what one of them is though. Earrings. Not these earrings. I have a pair of fake pearl earrings that you've probably seen me in that I have worn consistently for a few years now. Uh, I got my ears pierced when I was younger. I was 14 at the time, which is probably old for many of you who already have your ears pierced. But I have had earrings in almost every single day of my life since I was that age, since I was 14. And they are just a part of who I am. I kind of feel naked if I don't have my earrings in. So that would be one of the things that would go on my sculpture. What would go on yours? I look forward to seeing your answers and sharing mine next week. If you have any trouble sharing, please let me know. Don't forget that you can cut and paste an image into the assignment. If you can't manage to do that, you can do add work to the outside of the assignment. And if all else fails, just email it to me. If you have problems, let me know. I can't help if I don't know. And I'll talk to you again next week. Bye, guys.